Hey everybody, we were looking at some batteries in a little circuit board. If you look carefully at this connector, you might recognize that connector. Yes, these are cells out of laptop batteries. Technically, they're known as 18650 lithium ion cells. Here's a close up of one right here. As you can see, 18650. So basically, the blue cells came out of an HP battery pack, and the pink cells came out of a Toshiba battery pack. These cells are manufactured by LG. These were made by Sanyo. So basically, I extracted these the other day. First, I done these, but it turns out they were all bad. So I done an HP pack and all these turn out to be good. Basically, um, this is a common thing for laptop batteries to go bad. But usually, when they do go bad, it's just, you know, maybe two cells out of the whole pack. Or this little circuit board here. Be another cause. This circuit board is in charge of monitoring the cells, preventing them from getting overcharged, preventing them from getting undercharged. It estimates the capacity of the cells, you know, how they're doing and things like that. And if it detects that cells go bad, well, it shuts off the battery from ever being used. So you have several perfectly good 18650s in there that are going to waste because of that. So basically there are other devices out there that use these. Um, a, common, a common thing that uses these kinds of cells is flashlights. Like two LED flashlights, like this one here. So basically, um, I extracted these cells with a purpose, with the intent of reusing them to power my flashlights. Now it turns out there are little oversights for these particular lights, but I've already went online and purchased two new flashlights that happily accept 18650 cells. So um, basically. Let's go and talk a little more, more, more about lithium ion batteries in general. I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with these and how these are good. So as I mentioned, I pulled the Toshiba cells first, which are actually Sanyo's. Here's you a close-up of, of the Sanyo cell. Kind of weird looking. It has a green colored, um, it's a green colored cap. And that cap is actually very important. It actually um, separates contact between positive and negative. Negative is actually that close to the positive on the 18650 cell. So let's see if you can see it or not. Sanyo. And of course, let me show you the LG again. You've probably already seen it. Obviously, you can see. LG. Okay. Let me explain why these Sanyo cells are bad. Basically, you know, lithium ion cells, um, or at least their nominal voltage is around 3.6 to 3.7 volts. Um, in case you've never seen 18650 before, there's a double A. So it's slightly oversized compared to a double A cell. So basically, as I mentioned, 3.7 volts is the nominal operating voltage of these. You know, 3.6, 3.7. Fully charged voltage is about 4 to 4.2 tops. And the minimum you should ever take these down to is about 2.8 to 3 volts. Now every single one of these cells, these Sanyos, was way below that 2.8 threshold. So here we have a multimeter. I can stand it up so you can see it a little better. So anyways, um, this side's positive, this side's negative. Normally you should see about 3.7 volts out of these. Which by the way, both of the you know both these packs haven't been charged in a long freaking time. Now lithium ion cells, when they're in good standing, have a very, very low self-discharge to them. As you can see 2.2. So that's not good. Two point 
2.19. So these are roughly about 2.2 volts each. And they're all about that same voltage. So my guess is these cells have developed a high discharge situation, high self-discharge situation, where the pack is set for an extended period of time, and these batteries have just they've self-discharged below their minimum threat threshold. Now, why this minimum threshold? I'll explain it to you in a moment. I'm gonna set these back over here. And let's test the LG cells. Now these have been sitting um, disconnected completely for over a day now. Normally they're wired to the circuit board in doubles in parallel. But anyways, let's go ahead and test these. As I mentioned, 3.6 to 3.7 is the nominal voltage of a lithium ion cell like this. Three point seven two, three point seven three. Again, three point seven three with this one. So you can see all six of those, they're in good standing. Now why that 2.8 volt minimum? Basically, if you take a lithium ion cell below 2.8 volts, it starts to damage the cell. Low, you know, low voltage is not good for a lithium ion. Because what happens is when you get below that certain threshold, you start getting very low, the cell can sometimes short itself out. Now this, this is especially common if it's, you know, if it's drained to zero. Now these, now those Sanyos could possibly be recharged, but they would not be in nearly as healthy st um, state as they were previously. Because once you get below that 2.8 volt threshold, the cell can become unstable and there are things like that. Um, worst case scenario, the cell can have a high amount of, of um, internal resistance and get hot. Worst case scenario, explode. Lithium ion cells, you gotta treat them with respect. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna demonstrate these in my light. The Sanyos are so bad off, they're being at what, 2.2 volts? They're so bad off that they don't even light this light up. That's because. You know, LEDs, just like regular diodes, have minimum turn-on voltage. For example, with the silicon diode, it's 0 0.7 volts. LEDs, different. I don't know exactly for sure what the Cree LED is, but... So that's a Sanyo. You know, 2.2 volts, not doing anything. Stick an LG cell in there. And you'll probably see that it works extremely well.
Now it's flickering because the connection isn't perfect. But yeah, works very well. This is a 220 lumen light that I've been using on my road bike for several years. Now basically what got me started in the idea of using 18650 to power my um, flashlights is because my existing <laughs> Nikomoto Hydride cells, AAAs, they're getting tired. And I've never been really impressed with the amount of run times these things have had. Even these at 1000 milliamp hours have never been all that great. Now these cells have developed some high internal resistance. I'll show you for example here. We measure the voltage of these. All three together. Three point six nine. Let's stick them in here. You may notice that this light is nowhere near as bright. You can even see. I'm sure you can even see it on camera. This is pitiful, pitiful. But those lithium-ion cells, at least the LGs. Same voltage, but you can obviously tell little to no internal resistance because they light it up very nice and bright. So yeah, that's that's one reason. Um, you know, my my nickel hydride cells are getting bad. You know, and I figured, considering nickel hydrides, at least the um, triple A's, do not offer a very high amount of capacity. You know, the runtime on my light was about, I don't know, two hours tops. It was never all that great. Whereas these lithium ion cells, um, or at least, you know, the case of the Sanyos, they're rated for, what, 2,000 milliamp hours. And these, depending on where you look, um, I'm getting mixed results on these LGs. Um, some people are saying, 2400 milliamp hours or 2200 milliamp hours. I'm sticking with 2200 milliamp hours, uh, which you know, 2200 versus what you know, 700 for a typical nickel hydride AAA. That's a huge improvement because basically, you know, with the with the tri you know with the nickel hydride chemistry, you know, single cell like this is its nominal voltage is 1.2 volts, as you can probably see on this cell here. It tells you. You can probably see how bubble to cell is. I got extremely overheated one time. 1.2 volts. Whereas the lithium ion single cell is 3.7 volts or 3.6. It kind of varies a little bit. So you're you know getting a much higher voltage per single cell, much higher capacity. So anyways, um, a good you know a good reuse for these cells is in flashlights. Now for you guys who watch my videos who happen to uh, vape, I want to explain a few things to you. Um, depending on what kind of vape setup you have with your you know with your e-cigarette, depending on how much power draw it has, you know, these cells here may not be a good choice because a lot of these cells are not rated for very high current draw. Like I don't know. Some are rated for like 5 amps, maybe 10 amps tops. You might be able to get um, some decent ones out of maybe a power tool, but um, you definitely, if you extract some out of laptops and you happen to have a device that has a very, very high amount of power draw, you definitely want to do some research. Now, even, even for some of you guys who have these flashlights that um, put out what, I don't know, 2000 lumens that are just so freaking bright. Um, you know that brightness requires a good bit of draw from the battery and I don't suggest using these standard unprotected cells in anything that requires more than one in series because what can happen is if you have a cell that's not so good you know one you know if the, one cell that's not fully charged and a cell that has a higher charge what can happen is a cell that has lower charge can end up getting reverse charge and go kabam yes explode you want to treat lithium ion with respect. Now, for a single flashlight application, 
I don't see any problem. You know, just one cell by itself. Um, you know, these lights here, um, as you saw previously with the, the cell that was like 2.2 volts, wasn't even working. You know, by the time a cell gets down to like, you know, 2.8, it's barely, you know, it's, it's barely even lit up. So basically, with single cell flashlights, um, even with unprotected cells, you still want to be careful. Um, now some flashlights, and I think my flashlights, um, will not actually allow a battery to run down below, I don't know, 2.8 volts. I mean, as, as you can see, the Senyos didn't even light up at all. Now, these LaCrosse batteries that I showed you previously, you know, the ones with high internal resistance, even though they were measuring 3.6 volts, yeah, even though they were measuring 3.6 volts with the uh, multimeter, the at load voltage was significantly lower because, you know, due to resistance, the voltage dropped while the batteries were under load. So, you know, some, you, you, know you have to use some common sense if you're using unprotected cells because you are the protection. Um, you don't want to use more than one in series with them unprotected. If you're using just one cell, you know, like an application like this, sure. You know, in the case where I use these as, as like a you know bicycle headlight, obviously you'll know when the batteries are starting to get low by when the um, light starts you know start to get dim. Which, with this you know, with my prior experience with the with the Nikomel hydrides, this starts to get pretty low when the batteries get down to about 1.1 to 1 volt. So you know that's each. So all three together, the equivalent of one lithium cell. So what three volts so anyways um there's lots of stuff out there in regards to how to you know on videos and tutorials on how to extract these if you had to go about doing this please be careful um you definitely want to have some prior electronic experience because you know these things are packed very tightly and sometimes you can't short them out when extracting them so if you've never done this before you may want to do it outside, <laughs> somewhere where you can actually throw the battery pack down and prepare for a fire if you do short the thing out. Obviously, if you can't remove the short. So anyways, um, now in regards to charging these things, I just purchased a charge off of Amazon. I'll have to post a link in the description. If I don't do it, remind me to do so. I, I actually um, purchased a pretty nice charger. It is a BT-C3400 Universal Battery Charger Analyzer Tester. It does lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, you know, all those. So it does basically what my LaCrosse um, BC900 and Maha C9000 can do. Which those are also nice chargers. So anyways, um, that is what you can actually find inside of a laptop battery. I know this video is not the most descriptive out there. Um, hopefully you did learn some things today. Maybe if I decide to extract cells out of a different laptop battery, I might do a video of me doing that. But I haven't posted a video of, you know, I haven't shot any video of my previous extractions. Because it was so time consuming. Because I took my time with it. If you decide to do this, please take your time with it. Don't try to rush yourself. And please be careful. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask them. Thanks for watching.